Hi guys, Sugar here, and today I'm going to make the video that I wish I had when I started Rising Linux and guide you and help you in this journey of making your computer a little bit more yours, you know? So follow along. Before we begin, I have to say this is a generalistic guide. So it doesn't matter what distro you're in, what window manager you want to use, whatever you're doing, it's gonna work, okay? So no problem, you're just gonna learn a little bit more about all these topics here. So the meaning of writing, what are dot files and all these other stuffs that when I started, I had no idea what's going on. So let's get more knowledge guys. Let's understand a little bit more. First of all, what is rice? Rice comes from the term race inspired cosmetic enhancements, which means you're going to spend a lot of money to not gain any performance that's in the car world okay here we're not gonna spend any money but it's basically things that are just for the fun of it and the pretty of it so make your miata blink one eye each time you know it doesn't come like this you have to make a bunch of electric modifications but you know it blinks now so it's pretty that's what basically rice means and what does this mean in the linux world so you're gonna take your ugly ass computer and make it cool and rock and roll and tech so you know jennifer from rh she's gonna come over and she's gonna look at your computer she's gonna be like oh my god hacker man mr robot here he's gonna end the world wow i just realized it rh but it's hr my bad and when you are wandering the lands of rising you're gonna see a bunch of people in comments and in threads saying dot files please what does this mean shigo dot files are basically hidden files which for configuration files are all of them. They like to stay hidden. So if you come here with me and we list our directory, you see I list all the other things that are here on this home directory. But if I do an ls-a, I have a bunch of more stuff because all these things with dots in the beginning, they're hidden, they don't show up normally. On your file manager, you have to click the show hidden files. These are the hidden files, they are the dot files. And when we are in a context of rising and someone is asking for the dot files, they want the configuration files of the person's computer so they just can copy paste on their computer. And why is that good? Why, why dot files are cool? Why everybody wants them? They're basically an easy way of replicate your system other, in other places. So here I have a dot files on GitHub uh, and an example of dot files that is my new reconfiguration. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it later, but it's basically the configuration of my computer in text or in a specific language that I can just save it and make a bunch of copies. And if I destroy my computer and I have to save it somewhere, I can just download it and my computer is back. The way I configure it and everything that the way that I wanted it. So that's a good thing of dot .files. You can use Git to keep track of your rices and your configurations so you don't lose anything all your hard work <laughs> making your computer pink it's gonna it's gonna be worth it it's not gonna explode you can save it so that's a good thing here on the down here we have some um, examples of configurations of hyperland the second one is from vim neo vim sorry waybar zsh and kitty the terminal so these are some dot files and these are what dot files are so next time you see someone crying for those it's just text text they want someone's configurations. And one thing about Linux and writing world is you see a bunch of people saying these two words that is Wayland and X11. And what are they? They are display servers protocols. Before you type, people that know, please don't rage type yet. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them, don't, but they are display servers for now. Let's say they are display servers. So here on the Wikipedia definition, okay, it's better than AI. Um, a display server or Windows server is a program whose primary task is to coordinate input and output of its clients to and from the rest of the operating system, the hardware, and each other. So it's basically what takes care of the input output of visual stuff and what we see in between each other. This is the definition, okay? So here we can see some examples of everything. What does it mean, Shigu? What are you talking about? I had to read a bunch of Wikipedia pages right now, okay? I'm going to keep it very dumbed down, but... It's a rabbit hole that you're going to spend some time reading stuff to understand. So, yeah, just, just follow along. I, I, this is the best way that I try to simplify about it. So, in the X11 side, we have these three main components. That is the display server, that is XORG. The compositor, that we can have PyCon, 
I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to say PyCon or PCon. I don't know. And the window manager, that's the most famous one that I know is i3. So this play server takes the hardware IO, passive messages between the windows. Uh, the compositor is all the visual effect side stuff. So transparency, vsync, if you want some blur, if you want like a bunch of particles popping up, the rounded corners, this is all the compositor that does it. And the window manager is like the thing that manages the windows. So the layout, the window coordination, the borders between the windows. So it's a big part of the Linux communities to use is X11. And just now the major desktop environments are um, migrating to Wayland. That is the next one I'm going to talk about. But you can still use this one and it's good because it's old. And an old thing, it means like it, it has some stability, okay? It's not, it's just in maintain, maintenance state. It's not being actively developed to add like that much new stuff. Wayland is like having new stuff all the time. So if you're going to be more, it's better because, you know, more modern, you can have more stuff. But X11, if you like Deb Debian, you like stability, you like your stuff never breaking, X11 might be for you. But Wayland, I think it's a good enough state that everybody's already changing to it. The big players are changing to it. I use it. So if the big players are saying, uh, who am I? To, to say no, okay? This is an i3 rice that I found on UX porn. You see, it's beautiful. It is old, but it's actively maintained. So you can you can still do pretty things. So yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, most people will look at this and say, oh, it's, it's, it's pretty. So yeah, that's the example that I found. And I think it's pretty. So yeah, go i3 if you want it. In the Wayland side, the three things are one, okay? So this might be confusing because in Wayland, we don't have like a window manager. We have a Wayland compositor, but a Wayland compositor has a window manager. So when you say something from Wayland is a window manager, you're kind of wrong, but you're kind of right because they are the same thing in there. But just don't lose your head about it, okay? It's just because when you see someone say a Wayland compositor, is the window manager from Wayland is basically it. So we have Hyperland, Neary, that are the big players that I know about. Mutter is the one that GNOME uses. So yeah, like that. And one thing of Wayland is it's new, but not everyone is still on board with it, like having the software using it. So we have like this little thing down here called X Wayland. There is the, sorry for butchering the word, compatibility layer between like the Wayland compositor with X11 applications because there are applications that are made for X11 and they were not ported for Wayland yet. So we have this layer between them. It's like when you want to run a Windows game but you're on Linux and you have the Proton layer between that, like making the translations is what X Wayland is. It makes the translation. Maybe in like 10, 15 years when all the applications are probably on Wayland already, we won't use it anymore. But right now, for example, if you do a simpler install only with like Hyperland or Neary, you're going to install X Wayland because like Steam, Steam is only X11. You need X Wayland for Steam to run. So yeah, that's the thing to keep in mind. But everything on Wayland is the same thing, it's, it's together. The Wayland compositor, like Wayland is the protocol and things that use Wayland are Wayland compositors and Wayland, uh, it's confusing, okay? It's confusing, 6 a.m., I didn't sleep, but it's basically, that's, that's what matters for rising right now, that's what matters. So this is a, a rice from using Wayland. Wow, I, what a beautiful rice. I, I think the person that uses this computer is like so beautiful or something, I don't know. It's just, just an opinion of mine. Um, but now, let's go to bars and panels. What are they? They are bars. Basically, it's the bars that show information on your computer. Because when you are on a Wayland compositor, or when you are, I'm gonna just say window managers, okay? When you are using window managers, they don't come with anything, okay? They don't come with anything. You have to install everything yourself, and you need to install your own bar. So here I have the Windows bar, the the most famous one. Everybody knows the Windows bar. Here we have Waybar, and the one that you it is used on X11. Waybar, there's using Wayland, and yeah, another one that is used on X11 applications. So it's basically the bar that you install is very riceable. You can configure it as you like it. You can you can steal other people dot files, okay? And it's gonna be beautiful. But these are the bars. This is what are bars. GTK and Qt. GTK and Qt are toolkits for making applications. So basically, it's like 
the buttons that you see and the layouts, these are the things that use it. For rising, this is important because some color palettes you can apply to the GTK or QT or both at the same time. Basically the things for the buttons, there are two kits. So if you see these two words, that's what they mean. And on your Linux, on your Linux, you're probably going to have this down here, a bunch of QT assist, QT, 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 QT. This is what it means, okay? It's using for the applications that need buttons, basically. Do not uninstall any of this, okay? Just leave it there. Now let's get into terminal emulators. What are they? Well, it's basically the terminal, um, but it's an emulator. Because you know, a bunch of time ago, people used real terminals to talk with the computer. That's what they had. And now we want to be like old people and we use terminals as well, but we need to emulate them. So it's basically a text box that you use to talk with the shell of the computer. The shell is what communicates with the kernel that runs the commands like your LS and all your C matrix on your terminal emulator. So there are a bunch of them. You're gonna ask me, Shigo, is that a better one? Which one's the fastest? Everyone's gonna say a different thing, okay? Everyone has their preferred one. Kitty, Alacrity, Ghosty, the default one from Gnome. Everybody loves their own. I've been using Linux for two years now. It's not a long time. I'm, a, I'm still a Linux baby. But I've never seen a difference between the terminals, okay? The difference that you're gonna find is, oh, one of them renders the font a little bit different than the other. So it looks like more pretty on the computer. That's the difference that I found. The other differences are, oh, this one supports like having panels. So you can have like tabs inside your terminal, having multiple tabs inside of one. Oh, this one like can render images and so on and so forth. But if you're gonna use your terminal for basic stuff, you, you, you for rising, you're just gonna need to change the color palette and make it transparent. All of them do that. Like all of them. I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen one that does not get transparent nowadays or have a different color palette. So for rising, you're good. You're gonna have your you're gonna have your cool colors, okay? You're gonna have your cool colors on your computer. Don't 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 worry about it. That's not that difficult. Quick show. I made like a full video of it, but it was kind of shit. I'm sorry. This is literally the future of rising. You know all the past things that I talked about rising here to you guys? Quick show can do like most of them. Like, and it's so easy to use. Quickshell is a toolkit for building status bars, widgets, lock screens, and other desktop compartments using the Qt Quick that is built on top of Qt, the thing that we talked about of making desktop things. So it's basically it. And it's like the one for all bundle of Rising because one of the big things about Rising is you have two options. You go with the window manager side Wayland Compositor, and you go with desktop environments. That's the one that we're gonna talk about now. Desktop environments are desktop environments. They do everything for you, and they are like one for all complete. They are the full package. You don't need to do anything. You install them, you use a computer, and that's it. But one of the bad things about desktop environments are they're not very riceable. You know, you can rice them. I use GNOME for the most part. I use Linux Mint when I started. You can like change the colors, you can add some blur, you can add some animations, but like you don't have all the control in your hands per se. You don't, you cannot like desiccate your system and do whatever you want with it. You cannot do that. But on the other hand, if you want to do that, you're going to go through the part that you have to do all yourself. You're not going to have anything ready for you. You're going to have to build everything from source. And sometimes we don't want to do that. Like, I want to have be able to desiccate like one specific thing, but I don't want to build all my system. And Quickshell, Quickshell is the thing that, that like saves us in a way that is like absurd. Because let's say you go with Hyperland, you install your Hyperland, Window Manager, Wayland Compositor, and then you go and you are on it. Okay, you only have your screen, and you can open terminals, applications. You don't have a lock screen. Okay, you don't have a way to connect to Wi-Fi, okay? You don't have a way to change your audio output on a GUI, okay? That's crazy, you don't have anything because you're not on a desktop environment. You have to do everything. But Quickshell, <laughs> so right here, this is like the Quickshell website. 
you can show him showing everything. And all of this was made with quick shell. Okay? So it's like a toolkit that you can do anything for your rising environment. Everything. Even the lock screen. Like this, the finder, the app finder, is also on quick shell. So it's a all in one bundle. When you are in the window manager part, you have to like stall everything separately. And that sucks because sometimes you forget to install something and when you need it, you need to find it and install it. When you download the shell like this, okay? In my personal opinion, like the one that I'm using right here now, it's called Noctalia shell. I can, I'm gonna leave the link in the description. I made a video about it, like you can watch it. It is good. I have everything that I wanted. I, I don't need to, to stall it any other different way and it works, okay? I can change things. Like I, I didn't have to, I didn't have to make any of this. And this doesn't work. I'm on Niri right now. Oh, Gimp is open. None of this works. Like, out of the box. On Niri. Like, you don't have anything. And this makes... It, it gives the desktop environment for the window manager. And it's like the best of both worlds. Because I can rise it. And I can have things done for myself that are already ready for me. So, for me, this is the win-win. This is the future. I believe uh, the other things will keep existing alongside with it, but this is the go-to, okay? If you're starting rising now, this is the go-to. Like, if you're, if, you, if you're the type of guy that just wants to download dot .files anyways, just download the quick shell config and it's going to be way easier to use and configure it anyway, so come on. As a bonus for who stay to the end, these are the apps that usually appear on like Unix porn and stuff. So this is the video that I wanted to have when I started Linux Rising. Thank you.